When Chicagoans Doug and Holly Funk discovered that their adopted daughter Mia had a twin sister living in Florida, they knew the two girls had to meet. As a gift for her non-identical twin sister, Mia Diamond Funk brought along the second musical lamb Holly had originally purchased when she thought she was going to adopt twins. They went and looked at each other, and my Mia had the two lammies. I was going to give her one of them. I felt like mission accomplished. There's your lammy, you know. And her Mia had to the two baby dolls, and she was going to give. So they exchanged their little gifts. I thought their mannerisms were more remarkable than their looks. Yeah, and so then they held hands and walked, and the whole time we were waiting, they didn't let go of each other. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, there was a connection, we could tell. The girls got along famously. Both families are now committed to frequent visits to build a strong relationship between the twins, and they want the girls to remember that God was in their adoption every step of the way. Uh, whatever happens in their life, uh, I think that this, they can always look back and know that there's a great big God. And he knew there were two. And he made sure that they got together. But that's not the end of this tale of twos. Because before the Funks had even completed Mia's adoption, God spoke again to Doug. He was in the kitchen and again, the same thing happened where he felt the strong sense of the Holy Spirit heavily on him. He said, Holly, the Lord is telling me that we're to get a little boy from Taiwan. And I, and I knew the Lord spoke to me the same right after uh, he said, and you're going to name him Jim after our pastor. Even though the Lord had spoken directly to Doug, he questioned how they could afford a second adoption. I kept saying, uh, show me the money. Lord, you have to show me where it's coming from because I just do not know. Did he? He did. Yes, he did. For this adoption, Holly sent out a Christmas letter explaining their financial needs. The letter got into the hands of a woman they didn't know, and she called, offering help. We were kind of waiting for the Lord to move, and He did mightily. Uh, she sent us a check for $5,000, which was incredible to us because we never met her, you know. Show me the money. There it is. You know, thank you, Lord. It was great. With that and other donations, a small inheritance, and money from their 401k, the Funks had the money they needed. A few months later, they were traveling again, this time to Taiwan, to pick up Jimmy, a four-year-old who had been born to a heroin addict and who had been in foster care for years. And I kept asking the Lord, are you sure you want us to take him? Because I didn't want him to be, I thought it would be hard on him be taken from a family, a foster family. And I, we kept getting the firm like, yes, take, this is the child. Jimmy started bonding with his new parents that first day. But at the airport to go home, his foster father unexpectedly showed up. I'm literally at the check-in with my baggage and I'm giving them the tickets and, and he starts to bend down and starts to pick Jimmy up out of the stroller and Jimmy's shaking his head, no, 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 and grabbing my leg. And um, if he wasn't buckled in, he would have had a hold of him. And Jimmy didn't have, want to have anything to do with him, which I thought was kind of different because he spent three and a half years with him. And uh, I was glad, I couldn't wait to get to the other side where he couldn't come. Because contact like this was against the rules, the Funks emailed their adoption agency about the incident. What they heard back shocked them. And they asked him, how did you know when the Funks were going to be at the airport at such and such a time? And their answer was that they had prayed to their Chinese god such and such, and through divination knew we were going to be there. We said, whoa, you got to be kidding me. So you're talking high level high witchcraft. High level stuff going on against this kid already. He needed to be out of this family. He was involved in witchcraft and there was a very uh, high level of abuse. And, um, and I've, I knew that this was the right thing to do, you know, that we had him. Five biological children and two adopted children later, the Funks are still listening to what God wants for their family. So what's being stirred up in you again? <laughs> It's not me. It's not Just you. Just so you know, it's not me. It's whatever God wants me to do. We're supposed to go to Mongolia next. And the Lord said uh, and there's a three-year-old girl, and her name is Candy, because she's going to be so sweet. Oh, so there you go. I love you. I love you.
I don't know why. Why me? Because I'm not nowhere near being perfect. Love you, Squishy. <laughs> but I'm blessed that it is me. There's 12. I don't know how many there's going to be, but God knows. And that's what he wants me to do, so be it. You know, that's the way it is. It's just a matter of obeying him, no matter what he's telling you. It's adopting foster care or whatever it is. There's always limitation with us, but there's no limit with God. He can do all things. He will amaze you. He will take you on an adventure you never thought you could go on. You get out of your comfort zone and get out of the boat and you will be amazed and you will be in awe. You will be in awe of God. It'll deepen your faith and it'll, it's, a, it's a miraculous thing to do. What a precious story, yes. isn't it? Such an encouragement. Um, there's an organization that she was telling me about called Kingdom Kids, mm -hmm. and you can get the information our viewers can if they go to aspiringwomen.tv, but it's a nonprofit organization that if you give money to, you get a tax deduction because mm -hmm. it's a nonprofit, and you can help fund adoptions for other people that can't afford adopting. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful way to support the adoption process. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah, even if you feel like you're too old, yeah, right. <laughs> like me, uh, but you, you know, still to have a heart. But you still have a heart for children. Exactly. It's a wonderful idea. You know, I love that they felt reluctant to adopt Jimmy because he had been in the same home for three and a half, four years. Mm -hmm. But God knew he was being abused. He needed out of that he home. He needed to right. be out of that home. He certainly Absolutely. did. Yeah. You know, so sometimes when we have like this idea, God really yeah. knows what's going on. But let's talk about the reality of witchcraft yeah. and how powerful mm -hmm. it is that this guy would be able to divine oh, exactly where this kid away. was. But look at this little child just already knowing the spirit of light and darkness. Yeah. I know. Well, we'll be back in a few moments with some final thoughts. Stay with us. Oh my goodness. I just think no matter how big the mountain seems, mm -hmm. when God calls us to do something, He equips us to do it. If it's 5,000 right. or 20,000, right. it's no big deal to God. He can exactly. show up. I mean, well, he can provide. Well, what's the well, same? I have to tell you, when, when when Jerry and I adopted Vanessa, we we didn't have any money. We borrowed the money and right. worked for us. Yes. You know? right. But what does it God say? They, they say that when God gives you a vision, he also makes the provision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. Oh, yes. that's so great. And the greater the need, the greater the miracle. That's right. As we see that in all of our lives and we look at the story of this, these two families, their needs were great, but God provided a way. Well, it's always about God showing up and showing that we couldn't do it, but he could. That's right, Michelle. I love adoption stories. To me, each one is a tale of hope, faith, and perseverance. And yes, the miracle of a family. And as an adoptive mother myself, I believe that nothing is as close to the heart of God as opening up our hearts and homes to children that need a loving family. It's not always easy, but it is incredibly rewarding. Perhaps you've been stirred by the amazing faith of Holly and Doug as they considered adoption. Maybe you're considering adoption as a way of building your family. If you are, I urge you to seek God's wisdom about taking the next step and who knows, a little bundle of miracles might be in store for you. See you next time. <laughs>